Hi everyone, welcome to Ask Amy. I have a question today from Nicole, and it's a nice, short, and to the point one. Nicole says, Amy, I'm loving your book and just started listening to your podcast. Thank you. How do I deal with critical things that people say? How do you not dwell on it and let it affect you all day long? That's the question. How do we deal with critical things that people say and how can we start to bounce back faster so that we aren't um, you know, dwelling on it all day long? So the first thing I want to say to you in particular, Nicole, is that since you um, are kind of new to this whole understanding, I just want you to know that as you see more about how your mind works, about how resilience and bouncing back and uh, not dwelling on things and all of that, how that is your nature. I mean, it, it is so built into you, Nicole. You do not have to worry about that. But you're new at all this, and it takes a bit, you know, but I just want to, I want to uh, encourage you that because, you know, you're kind of new to this, as you keep looking, as you keep seeing, oh, my mind just talks about stuff, and then that stuff flows away, and then I find myself kind of bouncing back to a, a decent place where I'm not dwelling and I'm not carrying things around. As you keep seeing that the only thing we ever feel is our own thinking, thought brought to life through us, not what other people say, and I'll expand on all, each of these things a little bit, but we can't feel what they say. We feel what's brought to life within us. As you keep seeing all of that, absolutely no question, you're going to get your wish. So you will just start to, you know, take things a little more lightly, I think, or, you know, not that we aren't affected by criticism. Everyone I know doesn't like it, you know, but, but, but it isn't this, it doesn't have to be this experience where you hear something and then boom, you're in, you know, sadness and dwelling for a day, two days, three days. Like that used to be my experience as well. And all I can say is that kind of seeing more about what's really going on, not how it appears, oh, they said this, therefore I feel horrible, but what's going on a level deeper and then a level deeper and then a layer deeper. Like what's going on really when we feel stuff and we think stuff and we're dwelling, it does so much, so much to shorten the lifespan of a dwell. <laughs> it really seriously shortens that. You get bouncier. You notice yourself bouncing back to a place where you aren't holding on to things so much more. And the things that that we feel and that, you know, again, if someone criticizes you or gives you some feedback or whatever, we're all human. Of course we feel that. But what we're really feeling is our own thinking. And as we see that, there gets to be a little bit of flexibility often or a little wiggle room in how we experience it. So it doesn't just necessarily look like, oh, they criticize me, that's bad, it means this about me. Like our mind doesn't go to the same go-tos quite as much. There is a spaciousness and an openness around it. So let me just speak a little bit in more detail about two of those aspects. One is that kind of seeing how, how thought moves through us, right? I can remember before I came across this understanding and for a while into it, I would get upset about something and be upset. Like I could be upset for a weekend. That wasn't uncommon, right? Something would happen Friday and I would think, I remember this so clearly thinking, oh great, well there's that weekend, you know, like as if something that happened at one point in time has the ability and will necessarily stay there, stay lodged in our minds and, and we'll dwell on it and we have to carry it around for days. I mean, that's not even true of minutes, seconds, but that is how it looks. And that was totally my experience too. And I'm, I don't know for sure, I might be making this up, but it feels like what started to shift that in a sense was a few things. And one big piece of that was seeing that our experience, it, it, it moves through us. Like it's not possible, I've said this here many times, but Nicole, if I gave you a million dollars to dwell on something for a week and not look away, stay dwelled on it, you couldn't do it. 
Your mind, you couldn't even do it for a day. Couldn't even do it for a few hours, I bet. See, our mind naturally wants to go away. <laughs> Stuff wants to move through us. Our mind moves around. Now, it can for sure grab onto that and replay it. Our mind works that way as well. It's a, it works in both ways. But, but we want to look toward the fact that, oh, thoughts brought to life, it comes up within us, and there's a natural momentum that wants to move it out. Now, can we dwell and and think about and obsess over, of course. But that takes effort. It does. It takes effort. It takes attention. It takes a degree of being in there with it. I think it takes, or or at least as we can dwell a lot longer when it looks like um, it's justified and we want to be right and they did this to us. All of that stuff, which is just the way experience feels and looks sometimes, all of that kind of contributes and and keeps us dwelling. But again, when we start to see this in a bigger way, of like, oh, it's thought moving through me, and by nature it wants to flow away, and by nature my mind wants to just you know see stuff and for the most part and move on, and it bounces back, it comes back in a resilient way to a peaceful place. If you don't know that, you're not going to know to look for it because you don't know it. And if you don't know it, you're going to just, and you really think it's the opposite way, like I did, like, oh, I'm going to be upset all weekend. You just keep innocently pulling it back. I can remember being upset with my husband. Okay, well, this is going to be, I'm just going to be mad at him all weekend. My mind would naturally, naturally start to shift. I'd think about something else. He wouldn't look half bad. And then, nope, that's right, I'm mad at him. You know, and you bring it back. So it's just a, it's just something we need to see. We just need to see how our mind works. And the more we see how it works, the more we start seeing evidence of that. Before you know how it works, it's hard to see evidence for something that you you have an opposing belief about. You know, you think, oh, I can dwell and I can stay stuck there. You're going to see evidence of that. So keep looking at that bounciness of our mind and that natural resilience. And the other piece of this, and again, it's around when someone criticizes you or judges you or something like that, is seeing that we only ever feel thought within us. And when someone, what someone says, someone's opinion, which is what a criticism is, it's their opinion, their opinion, now I think we probably all know this on some level, but their opinion is just their thought. It doesn't mean anything, right? Like when they're in a good mood, they probably wouldn't criticize you. Maybe if they're in a bad mood, they criticize you even more. There's a whole a whole thing going on in their minds <laughs> for their opinions to be formed and to come out of their mouth as criticism aimed at you that has nothing in the world to do with you. Nothing. They see what they see from the thinking in their own heads. That's it. And we all know there are people who can criticize everyone, anyone, right? I mean, people criticize Santa Claus, Easter Bunny. Like, you can find a flaw, a flaw in anything and anyone from a certain state of mind. Other people, they're, you know, these sweet people that you've never heard them say a bad word about anyone. Well, that's down to them. It has nothing to do with us. So, so when someone criticizes you, again, they're, they're just given, they're just, broadcasting the way that thought is showing up for them and somehow seeing something around that can be super helpful because so much of what what keeps something so sticky that we feel like we need to kind of dwell on it or that we're we just keep churning it over and over again is just simply that it feels like it's true like it feels personal if something doesn't feel personal to us, we're really good at letting it go. But when something does feel personal and like it's about us and it's an attack on us, we're really good at holding on. So just seeing it cannot possibly be the case. It's, a, it's an opinion. It's just their opinion. Even if you have the same opinion, like let's say you did poorly on something and they pointed it out and you're like, yeah, I did do poorly on that. You know, it's like, all we ever feel is our own thinking in that moment. We all get criticized. We all are judged at times. We all feel really badly about things that we've done or wish we could do things different. And every single time, we get over it. Like, thought wants to just, we come up, we feel it, it's there, and it wants to kind of move away. And the more, again, we can see that, that that's its nature, the more we notice 
that happening in a sense. When we don't know that that's its nature, we innocently think, oh no, this thing happened and I should be upset. And we, we find ourselves staying in it a little bit more. So it's not, Nicole, about um, not feeling hurt when someone criticizes you at all. It's not about not feeling anything. I mean, we're going to feel what we feel. And that's, I think, the healthiest, fastest, best, easiest way to be a human being is to just let ourselves feel what we feel and see how it works. Let ourselves feel what we feel. Feel upset if that's what you feel. And see that by, by virtue of being a human being, you're going to feel stuff. It's safe. It's okay. It can't hurt you. And it's going to want to move away. Period. And then everything else about how much we feel it or how quickly it should have moved or whatever, that's just us making it up, trying to figure it all out. What we know is we feel stuff. It's all okay. It's all safe. And it all wants to move. And the more we can kind of see that, you start to see it play out in your life more and more. So thank you so much, Nicole, for sending this question. Um, curious to hear from you in a month or so and hear how you're, how you're getting on with everything. Thanks, you guys, for listening. And I will see you back here next Monday. Have a great week. <music>